Hi, I'm Matthew. And I'm Joe. And we're here to talk about Nakama, and specifically Nakama for Unity developers. Now, if you've not come across Nakama before, then it's an open source games backend which lets you do various things, including matchmaking. Today we're going to talk about getting matchmaking going for your Unity game with Nakama. Particularly we're going to be looking at uh, players querying for matches to join and then connecting two players into the same match. Before we get onto that, I want to talk about a couple of things when it comes to multiplayer and Nakama. So Nakama supports a couple of types of multiplayer. It supports real-time and authoritative multiplayer. But the important concepts for an authoritative multiplayer, which we're going to get into a little bit, are server authoritative and client authoritative multiplayer. Client authoritative multiplayer, otherwise known as relayed games, are games where uh, the the information from the client, uh, the information from the game is sent through the client towards the server, and then uh, basically the, the server kind of takes that data and sends it to the other clients. Server authoritative games are where information from the client is sent to the server, and at that point, more computation or more work with that data is done on the server. So with the client ones, things like moving in the game, that movement will be done on the client, and then the server will be told where the player is. With server authoritative, the, the player will move on the client, the movement will be, the, the button presses will be sent to the server, and then the server will decide where the player is and, and this send is, it back. This is where um, the extra scripting that you can do with Nakama comes in in both Lua and Go. Absolutely, yeah. The Lua, the, uh, the modules that you can put on, ser on server side for Nakama are a great place where you can make use of uh, these different multiplayer types where you can say, for example, call RPC scripts and that kind of thing. Um, but with the server, the main effect these two multiplayer game types have on your game is in what kind of experiences you want to build. So for example, client authoritative multiplayer is really great for games where you don't mind as much things like cheating or you do care about latency of the experience. So um, because of the computations on the client side, you can do faster paced experiences, but it also means that if your client is compromised, they could, for example, uh, add wall hacks or aimbots, that kind of thing. Server-side multiplayer, so server-authoritative multiplayer, helps with that because the computation is done on the server, and so it's much harder for the client to mess around with things. So it's very popular for competitive FPS games, that kind of thing. So Nakama supports a wide range of multiplayer types, but to skip those sessions off, we do need to put users into a match in the first place. Okay. So we're going to start doing some matchmaking. Uh, if you haven't, if this is your first experience with Nakama, I highly recommend you go watch our past videos at this point. In particular, you're going to need three things. You're going to need a Nakama server running. We have a really handy video on starting a server on your local machine or on DigitalOcean uh, with uh, Nakama. We then also are going to need to connect to Unity. The first video in this, in the Unity series, uh, deals with getting Unity from the asset store and setting up a client and then we're going to need a socket connection our last video on real-time chat uh, helps you get set up with a socket to your nakama server we're going to be building on top of that socket today okay so we're going to jump straight in to our existing unity project this is the project we left it off in the last video our real-time chat video so what we're going to do uh, now is we want to set up our uh, matchmaking session. We don't need to add any new imports or anything like that. We're ready to go. And we've already got our socket set up. We, last time we built the socket using client.new socket. We added some event handlers to deal with that socket connecting. And uh, we added our socket connection. Now what we want to do is uh, build a matchmaker. And to build a matchmaker, it's very, very simple. There are two steps we need to do. First of all, we need to actually add that matchmaker and specify how many players we want to look for and also uh, let the player specify a query. And then we want to react to when we find a match. There's no point building a matchmaker if we never join the match once we find it. So we're going to add a new event handler for receiving a match made. Uh, so first of all, let's start with adding that matchmaker. So this is, again, going to be something on the socket. We're going to be talking to Nakama. And it's another async operation. So I'm just going to do await socket add matchmaker async this function takes three parameters uh, it actually takes many more parameters than that we're going to be showing three parameters there's other config options available but we're going to start with these three parameters first of all is going to be the query so there are a variety of game properties and player properties that a uh, you can query on to specify the sort of players that you might match against. So you can um, deal with various things, uh, like you can, as a game developer, can attach properties to a player, uh, and there are also some properties within the Karma that you can query so on. So I can create my own, but there's some standard ones as well. Exactly, yeah. Um, we are going to leave that as the wild card, so I'm going to put in a star, an asterisk. Mm -hmm. And next up is two very simple ones. It's the min players and the max players. Um, we're going to make a very simple session of just two players. We always want two people in it. Very simple head-to-head -head game, for example. 
obviously if you want if you were doing something like a counter strike or a shooter you might want minimum two players maximum 16 players or if you're doing dota you're going to have 5v5 that kind of thing um let's see if i know dota um so i'm just going to stick two in and two in and close that out so if i were to run this code now that would look for it would start a matchmaking session and my user the authenticated user here would uh, look for a matchmaker until they found another player also with that matchmaker running Go so ahead. how do, how do you in your client code know that that match has been made so that's where we come to adding a new handler so we're now going to go back up to our socket where we've defined all of our other socket handlers uh, and i'm going to stick in a new one and i'm going to call this this event that we're looking for now is uh, very similar to the received channel message one that we defined in the last video but it's received matchmaker matchmaker matched bit of a mouthful we're looking for the event received matchmaker matched so our matchmaker has found a match and it's returned that it's received it kind of sounds like a nursery rhyme received matchmaker matched yeah a little bit um and as with the received channel message, we there is a uh, we are acting on something that it has that it has returned us. So in the, in case of the last one, it's a message. This one, it's going to be returning us a match. So I'm going to do socket received match maker matched, and then th we're adding this in the event handler. So I'm going to do that plus equals syntax again, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, this function is a little bit different to the previous event handlers we've defined in that this uh, this event handler itself needs to be async because we want to once we've once we've found a match we want to start a game and starting a game is a server operation so it's going to be another async one so in our lambda function here I'm going to put async um, and then I'm going to capture the the match that we've made so I'm going to do async matched and then let's open, finish that lambda with a fat arrow perfect so. First of all, let's find out what that match is. Let's do a console um, output and see what we've got. So I'm going to do debug log format, and then I'm just going to throw in this matched parameter here. So we're going to get out the uh, the match object. So that will hopefully, when we print that, show who we've matched with. The object will tell us the ID of the match and who the match, what player that we are matched with. Um, now we actually need to create that match, create that game. So this is where that async operation I mentioned comes in. So we're going to call it a new match so we can do var match uh, and then we're going to do an await and then this is again on the socket socket dot join match async again if you're if you haven't been joining us for our previous videos one of the wonderful things about working within the karma api is all of the methods are super self-explanatory named we want to join this match and we want to do it asynchronously because we're working remote server so it's socket dot join match async and then the parameter for this is going to be the match that we established with our matchmaker so it's going to be brackets matched perfect so if we now were to run this and we were to actually make a match um, if we were to have for example uh, a second uh, socket running on this machine or you were to take this code and run it on your machine and we were connect to a remote server this would join and create that match and then output that but how do we tell who is in our match or how do we tell that that match has been successfully created and find the list of players well matches uh, and channels in fact for messages have what's called presences so nakama tracks the presences within the uh, within the match and those presences also have events so you can tell when a presence has when a player has joined when a player has left um, so for now let's capture the presences in this match so first of all um, we want to capture ourselves we want to make sure that we are in this match so we can do var self equals match dot self and that will capture our player object and then we'll deep we'll output that to console just be done before so we're going to do debug log format and then just output that self next up uh, let's just get all the presences in the match we can handle this we could iterate through this and get the players out and capture that information but let's just output the whole presences object so it's debug dot log match presences and there we go um, so this will print all of our presences in the match. So in, in reality, you'd iterate through that object though? And... Yeah, so with this match presences, it's not going to be uh, super readable or useful. If you were, for example, constructing a player list for the match, so in a lot of games, it's common to say, press tab during the game running to get a scoreboard or a player list. Um, this match presences is where you break those out and get those players okay. out and build that list. Right. Um, what what you would probably want to do in uh, especially a game that's uh, running constantly that players join and leave rather than like a game where you wait for the lobby to be filled and then start it is you would probably attach handlers to this match presences to detect when players join and leave and then you'd output 
that that information to the player. So you'd say like X player has left the game, X player has joined the game. So having created that and uh, having created that receive matchmaker handler and put in the uh, the various functions to join a match and to output the presences, if we go over to Unity and run that right now, what do you think is going to happen? Probably not a lot because we don't have another player. Exactly. Uh, we could add in a, as I mentioned earlier, we could add in a fake second socket into Unity and simulate another player joining. Uh, if you have been following this tutorial along on DigitalOcean, now would be a good time to go grab a friend and put this code on their computer and join it. Uh, but in this case, uh, this is a uh, demo we, we built earlier where we had two players join it. And you can see the uh, output from those console logs we put in there. And you can also see the presences objects that are outputting. So you can see those two players have joined. So that's it. That's the basics of uh, creating a match. And then from here, now that you've, we've got two players in a match, we can go on and make use of the various multiplayer game type APIs, whether that be real time or authoritative, client side or server side authoritative, and actually start having the players play a game. Uh, so to briefly recap, in this video, we built on top of the socket that we built in the previous video for real time meshing. And very simply, we took that same socket and established a matchmaker over it where our uh, players queried for players they wanted to match with. And then having found a match, uh, we joined them together into a game. And then from there, we can start a game with them. Great. OK, that's superb. So um, there's lots more to look at, but I think we're done for now. Yeah. Um, so I would say in the meantime, before we uh, move on to other videos, take a look at heroiclabs.com. You can find all the docs there, yep. the forums there, and the forums are a great place where you can interact with the, uh, the team who are actually writing Nakama and lots of people who are uh, deploying it and using it in production. And uh, I think that's about it. So Yeah, I guess one additional thing. Um, as I said, we have been using the Unity client. Uh, you can find the Unity client on GitHub if you encounter any issues or need any uh, tutorials. By using the Unity uh, client with Nakama, uh, you actually already have snippets and further examples within your Unity editor. Just go to the Assets folder, the Nakama folder, and then you'll find the snippets in there. And finally, if you go to the Heroic Labs GitHub, github.com for slash Heroic Labs, you can find the SDK and those snippets. But you can also find a full featured game demo if you search for Jolly Roger. That's a full game, including graphics, including usage of matchmaking, chat, uh, actually starting a game, tracking inventories. It uses a lot of Nakama features. Mm -hmm. It's a very full featured and complicated demo. And you can run that, download them, run that on your own Unity uh, on your machine and play around. Great. Well, thanks a lot, Joe. Thank you. And uh, thanks for watching.